Finally, my long-term review of the Pyopoli Moai resin 3D printer. This is a review, but it's a long-term review, and that's because I've taken so long to make this video. You might remember all the way back in July of 2018, I made a video on unboxing, assembling, and doing the first test prints on this printer. I think it's appropriate to start this video by issuing a public apology to Piopoli, as well as any viewers from this channel that have been waiting for this video. I'm gonna start by recapping the specifications, the assembly, and the first prints before I take you through my experience so far with this printer. The Moai started life as a Kickstarter and is a high resolution 3D printer that uses a laser shining onto a Galvo assembly to reflect the laser dot onto the bottom of the vat where light sensitive resin is cured to form the model. The vat is also motorized so it can tilt and release each layer and apart from that, the standout feature is the 130 by 130 by 180 build volume. The assembly took around three hours to complete and I gave the instructions a nine out of 10 and the first print was perfect. After the first print, I did a series of other flawless prints. I had zero failures. And then I ran into some trouble when I started switching to blue cast resin. The first prints were great, but then things quickly went downhill. I started to get failed print and inconsistent curing. I tried playing with settings and I ended up even further down the rabbit hole. The problem, me. I was using the LCD blend of Bluecast instead of the one for these laser resin printers. In the process of all of my failing, I also managed to tear two of the PDMS spaces on the vats that I had so far, meaning I couldn't use the printer. Around this time, I was working with Bluecast nonstop day after day, trying to print a series of projects for students at school. And I didn't really have proper ventilation in my room and I was starting to get some pretty severe headaches. I knew that I'd busted the printer, so I needed to update it to get it working again. And I also knew that I needed to do a much better setup for my own health. I ordered the new at the time, Easy Adjust Platform and FEP based VAT. These were from an Australian supplier that had these things listed as back order. It took months to come. I'm guessing they received my order and then ordered themselves from overseas. If you're in Australia, my advice would be to cut out the middleman and order direct from Piopoli. Eventually the parts came and by that stage I had started to move to this new room. I now have my resin printing set up inside a built-in wardrobe in a bedroom that nobody sleeps in and a roof fan in the top of that wardrobe to remove fumes. But this space still wasn't available until I had set up my current studio and shuffled the kids into their new bedrooms. A long time had passed but finally things were ready to go. With a firmware update and the new parts fitted, the flawless printing began once again. In fact, apart from the failures I had from using the incorrect blend of Bluecast, I've only had one model I couldn't print. This giant Hulk model failed twice, and it's no doubt my fault for my lack of experience in setting up a job of this nature. All of this has had the effect of extending the time frame in which I completed the review. And this has actually had the benefit for this printer of giving me a more positive experience. Let me explain. Firstly, the slicing. When I first got this printer, you had to add support in a third party software such as Zenith or Chitu, and then import that into a custom version of Cura. Now Piopoli has Ashura, an all-in-one solution that I really like. You can rotate position and you can even hollow out the model to save resin and all of the support and slicing is contained within as well. The vat. Previously, I had a PDMS, which is a silicon layer in an acrylic vat. Eventually this tears and the whole thing needs replacing. But now we have an option for FEP film, which is replaced without changing the entire vat. There's pros and cons for the two types of vats, but I prefer the FEP because it's what I'm used to from other resin printers. The build platform. Previously, your build platform leveling was adjusted underneath the machine after printing a small test object in each corner and measuring it. Even though it was meant to be reliable, in my opinion, that was far too involved and messy. Now, if you optionally purchase the easy level build plate, you simply unscrew the four bolts bring the plate to meet the vat and then tighten them up again and the two will be mated together perfectly. I think the support documentation has been cleaned up too. Originally, there were multiples of versions of things available and some of them are outdated, but those duplicates seem to have gone. Let's actually examine the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the print quality. The detail and resolution on this printer far exceeds FDM. Now I know there's some pretty nice prints around with small nozzles, but this trumps all of that. Look at the struts on this Eiffel Tower. 
or how small the lattice is on this Yoda. Unbelievable. Beyond jewelry, like the ring found as a test on the SD card, the most likely thing people are going to print on these printers is probably models and specifically miniatures. So I printed some. Now I don't know anything about these characters and what they're meant to look like, but it seems to me that they've turned out great. This slightly larger Hulk has a tremendous subtle detail on the skin. Just for fun, I tried out this chainmail and it formed beautifully. Just look at that flow. The way it moves is equivalent to FDM, but the surfaces are so much cleaner. I then scaled it down dramatically and I think I finally found the limit. As you can see, some of the parts haven't fully formed and the flow is not really what it should be. This 3D Benchy, however, doesn't look so good. Flat surfaces show up any shifting of your part because its support lattice might have moved during the print. I also sliced this one on the original slicing tool chain so it's not hollowed out and probably still has liquid resin inside. Now the Achilles heel of any resin printer is the amount of support material you need to add to your print to get it to turn out successfully. After you've cleaned off the excess resin and fully cured it under a UV lamp, the support lattice must be removed. By this stage, the resin is brittle, very brittle, which makes the post easy to snap or cut off, but the finished models will explode if dropped. This bearded yell bust is the perfect example of the implications of this type of support. It's perfect on one side and dotted with scars of support on the other. I could sand these further to remove these scars, but I've left them in for two reasons. Firstly, it shows you what you can expect from this type of process. Secondly, I really hate sanding. In this current configuration, I only have superficial complaints about this printer. Beyond printing, some of the LCD functions are a little bit clunky, but what would have been my original complaints, such as convoluted software and messy leveling, have since been fixed. The main issue for most people is most likely the price. Now I would personally recommend getting this printer with the FEP kit, easy to level plate, UV curing light, and some spare FEP film, which adds up to just under US $1,500. Now that's much more expensive than most FDM printers, but they call this affordable. How can that be? Well, that's because the competition for this printer, the Form 2 from Form Labs, is almost double the price. In my opinion, the question is not whether this printer is any good or not, because I can definitely vouch for the fact that it is. The question is really whether you want to commit financially to this type of technology. This printer compared to other resin printers has a really large build volume, which is going to be attractive to most people. If you are heading down this path, just keep in mind the special consideration for both the mess and the safety that you get with this or any other resin printer. Now, if you think you'd like to have a go at resin printing, but you're looking for more of a beginner entry level affordable model, I've just started a review of a more affordable LCD based model. That's gonna wrap this one up. I really need to get it out without any further delay and give me a shout out if you were one of the people who'd been waiting out for this. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.